Yo, 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 guys, welcome back again today. And today we're going to be talking about a very, very important figure in history, a very legendary artist, someone that preached peace and understanding. And also, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you'll never miss any of my videos. So let's just jump into it today. Bob Marley was born Robert Nesta Marley in the parish of St. Anne, Jamaica in 1945. His mother, Sedella Booker, was a singer and his father, Norvell Marley, was an Englishman and a captain in the British Army in the West Indian Regiment. His father would support the family, but was always away, and Bob would attend Stephanie Primary and Junior High School. During his time in school, Bob would sometimes be made fun of because of his lighter skin. When Bob was five, his father would send him to the Capitol to go to school, and this would be the last time that Bob Marley would see his father. Soon after, Bob Marley and his mother would settle down in Trenchtown, which was a West Kingston slum named for the sewer that ran through it. This poverty and high crime area would teach Bob how to defend himself very quickly. Bob was so good at street fighting, he earned the name Tough Gong. Bob Marley would eventually share quarters with a boy his age, and this boy's name was Neville Livingston, also known as the legendary Bunny Whaler. Soon after, Bob Marley and Bunny would start to make a guitar out of bamboo, electric wire, and sardine cans. This would be the beginning of both of their musical journeys as we know it, and the two would learn harmonies from local singer Joe Higgs. Like many in this generation, Bob and Bunny would listen to New Orleans radio and they embraced the rhythm and sounds of blues. Now, while listening to African American music, they would mix their own musical styles with these types of music, such as blues. When Bob Marley was 14, he dropped out of school to learn the welding trade and spent most of his spare time playing music with Bunny Whaler and Joe Higgs. Bob's mother was dedicated to him and wanted only the best for him. She would encourage him to learn a craft, but Bob soon abandoned the apprenticeship as a welder and wanted to devote all his time to music. It also didn't encourage Bob Marley to stay when a metal splinter got stuck in his eye. Ska music was big at the time, so Bob and Bunny started to take vocal lessons at the time as well. Soon after, their teacher would introduce them to the legendary Peter Tosh. In the 1960s, Peter Tosh would join Bob and Bunny in their music sessions. He would bring a crafted guitar to the group and the Wailing Wailers were formed. During this time, Bob would record a few songs with the producer Leslie Kong, which Jimmy Cliff, a ska celebrity, introduced Bob to. Now, Bob Marley's earlier records received little radio play, but this made his desire to sing and write songs grow even more. He would soon be joined by Junior Braithwaite and two other backup singers. The group would become Kingston celebrities in the summer of 1963, and the song Simmer Down would help launch the celebrity or their celebrity status. Bob Marley would go on to marry Rita Anderson, a Sunday school teacher with two kids before Bob and the Wailing Wailers would record more than 30 singles in the 1960s. Now in 1963, Bob Marley's mother would move to Delaware, which is located in the United States. And Bob Marley even worked in the USA. Bob Marley would move with his newlywed wife and acquire jobs in the local area within the state of Delaware in the United States. Bob Marley would work as a lab assistant at Hotel DuPont in Wilmington, Delaware. And he also worked at Chrysler in Newark, Delaware as a forklift driver. His mother would run Roots Music Store on Market Street and Bob Marley eventually bought the house next to his mother's home. Soon Bob Marley would get homesick and his passion for music in the island of Jamaica called him home. In 1967, Bob would return back to Jamaica and converted from Christianity to Rastafari. He would reunite with Peter Tosh and Bunny and would change the name of the group to the Wailers. We must note that Bob Marley is closely associated with smoking herb and it's called that in the Rastafari community and culture. Bob did not like smoking herb in a recreational way, but instead supported the plant for its meditational, spiritual, and healing abilities. Bob Marley also loved soccer or football for the people that are outside of America. 
Bob actually was so good at soccer or football and loved it so much that he would have it built into his contract to have a football field accessible wherever he toured. He would play soccer or football while in the UK, Africa, the States, and all around the world. He would play in West London especially and created a big reputation for himself. Many say that it was almost impossible to get the ball from Bob Marley and they would call him Skipper. And a lot of times Bob Marley would get the ball especially because of who he was and his status. But it also helped that Bob Marley loved the sport and every time he was past the ball he was very very good and it was almost impossible to take the ball away from Bob Marley. The group would soon create their own record label, Well in Soul, and abandon their rude boy philosophy for the Rastafari spiritual belief. This change would slow the group's music up to the steady rock and reggae influence that people know Bob Marley and the Wailers for today. Though the Wailers were very talented, they did not find success outside of Jamaica, and in 1970, Aston Barrett and his drummer joined the Wailers. Aston Barrett is very important to the group and is credited with bringing in the amazing bass guitar that reggae is based on today. He also produced a lot of songs in the group and the group would soon leave Jamaica to promote their music in London. While there, Bob Marley approached Island Records and asked the founder, Chris Blackwell, to finance a single for the group. Now, this company originally started in Jamaica, but eventually moved to London, and Chris would soon tell Bob Marley that he would actually like to make a whole album instead of just one single record. In 1971, the group recorded Catch a Fire, and this was the first Jamaican reggae album to have a large budget and commercial promotion. The sales for Catch a Fire were modest in Europe and not as well in the United States. It did do well enough for the company to stay interested in the group, and in the 1970s, the group toured extensively as well as recorded albums each year. They were slowly breaking into the European and American markets, and the Wailers would play shows with Sly and the Family and Eric Bruce Springsteen in America. Now it is said that the group eventually got pushed off the tour because they were too popular and they were not originally the headliners. And in 1974, Britain's own Eric Clapton would score a hit with I Shot the Sheriff, which was a Bob Marley composition. Now with this success, the Wailers would make their first major introduction into the United States of America in 1975 with No Woman No Cry as well as an album with live material. We must note at this point that Bunny and Peter Tosh left the group and a new group was formed and this group's new name was called Bob Marley and the Wailers. As Bob Marley's success grew, he would become more political. In 1976, he would release a song called War in which this transcribes a speech from the emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie was an Ethiopian king in which Rastafari was based on. And some people in Jamaica did not like that Bob Marley was making Rasta beliefs popular. Bob Marley would spend most of his time promoting peace and cultural understanding in Jamaica. He would soon perform a free concert called Smile Jamaica. And two days before the concert, someone opened fire at Bob Marley's house. At the time, Jamaica was going through famine and low employment rate and violence as well. All in which Bob Marley would talk about and advocate for peace within his country and all around the world. Soon after, Bob Marley, his wife, and his manager would soon survive a assassination attempt where his manager was wounded, where Bob Marley only suffered minor injuries. Even with this assassination attempt on Bob Marley, two days later, Bob Marley would perform war at the festival and the crowd went wild. He would then disappear and pop up in London, where he recorded the legendary album Exodus and then the album Kaya. Bob Marley would soon find out he had skin cancer, but only in his toe on his foot. He could have had his toe cut off, but he refused because of his beliefs. In 1978, Bob Marley would return to Jamaica to perform in the One Love Peace concert. He wanted to improve the existing political conflicts, so he invited both political opponents on stage for a handshake. Bob truly desired a day of peace, and he received it. This bold action also got the United Nations attention and the UN awarded Bob Marley the Medal of Peace for his bold actions. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the uh, views of the two political leaders that were in Jamaica. Manly promoted social democracy and giving back to the people, while Edward Siga promoted the opposite. Many reporters from the United States and Jamaica believe that the CIA and Edward Siga were in partnership together to win power in Jamaica by destabilizing the country by feuds and economical tactics. Bob Marley's activism was felt around the world in many countries and people found hope in his music. Now throughout the 1970s, the group would draw massive crowds in the US, Europe, South America, Central America, and Africa, and all around the world. In 1980, the Whalers and Bob Marley had the honor of performing at the independence ceremony when Rhodesia became Zimbabwe. Gaining independence from the British, Bob Marley would play one of the biggest, most significant concerts ever, The Uprising. This concert brought out 100,000 people, which was an amazing feat, and Bob was able to get through his first couple of shows, but eventually, Bob Marley's health would worsen for the worse. His last concert was in Pittsburgh in 1980. His music became very closely associated with the black political independence movement. This was prominent in many countries such as the United States, South America, and many countries in Africa. Bob Marley found a wound on his foot, like I stated before, three years prior in 1977, but he only thought it was a soccer injury. Some doctors believe that Bob Marley developed this naturally, while others believe someone put a cancer needle in a pair of shoes he was given as a gift while he was on tour. Bob Marley was soon told that his cancer was terminal and that he would pass away very soon. One of his last wishes was for him to die in Jamaica, but on the flight home from Pittsburgh, his health worsened, forcing the plane to stop in Miami, Florida, where Bob Marley would die and pass away. The Jamaican government held a national funeral honoring the memory of Bob Marley, and he would be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1994. Now, Bob wouldn't leave this earth without planting seeds, and Bob Marley would have over 10 children, in which many are famous today all around the world for their music as well as other achievements. Such of Bob Marley's kids who are very well known today are Damian Marley, Ziggy Marley, and Julian Marley, as well as Sharon Marley, and many more. Bob Marley also gave us albums such as Naughty Dread, Rastaman Vibration, Exodus and Survival. Bob Marley would go on to win many awards and won many awards and honors throughout his life, such as BBC's Song of the Millennial for the song One Love. He was also admitted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and Time Magazine's Album of the Century for his album Exodus. Bob Marley is one of the most influential Jamaicans in history and also helped to define reggae music to the world. His music remains popular to this day, and he is considered to be a prophet to many. So yo guys, today we learned about a very, very important man, a very important artist, and his life, and what he went through throughout his life, and all his trials and tribulations, and how he ended up passing away from cancer. And guys, always remember to learn about each other, to teach about each other, to always spread the message, each one teach one, and be kind and peaceful to each other as much as possible. Add me on all my social media, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and SoundCloud, which are all Afric Network. And yo guys, respect to all the Rastafari around the world, respect to all the righteous people around the world. I and I praise Ja, Rastafari. Until next time, peace, one love. What's up, what's up? Hey! Shalom. What up? Hi. 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 Hi.